Hey guys, Phil from Trail Talk here, and today we're going over my top five best value all mountain bikes for 2021, otherwise known as mid travel trail bikes. As with all my buyer's guides, I'm not here to waste any of your time, so the time for the first bike is up there, and timestamps for all the bikes in all the sections of the video are in the description. But if you want to stick around for a minute, I'll go over my criteria for what I look for in a great value all mountain bike as well as what I mean when I say value, because it's, as always, it's a subjective term. And if you're looking for some more budget options or shorter travel trail bikes, definitely check out my buyer's guide in the link in the description as well. Other than that, if you could smash that like button and subscribe, it'd be greatly appreciated because these videos take a little bit of time to put together. Okay, so let's jump in and first talk about who these bikes are for. So these bikes are designed for someone who does trail riding as well as enduro riding, so a bit of both. More importantly, it's for someone who enjoys the versatility of a trail bike, but definitely is starting to prioritize descending. So hitting those descents a little bit harder and hitting some harder trails too. So these kind of bikes don't mellow flatter trails as well as undulating terrain as much as an enduro bike, but they might not be quite as zippy or poppy as a shorter travel trail bike. They're really that happy medium between those two. For someone like me who enjoys more flowy and techy blue trails as well as black trails as well, this bike suits me perfectly. And that's mainly because I'm not hitting the craziest features out there. Happy to hit drops around one to two meters, but anything more than that, I think an enduro bike would serve me a little bit better. And I'm not charging down the roughest, rockiest trails either. So yeah, that's why this bike suits me perfectly. But as we see, as we'll start to look into these bikes a bit more, some of them will lean more towards the trail end of the category and some will lean more to the enduro side. And some of these bikes, you can pretty much race in enduros and hit the bike parks and that kind of stuff. There's some pretty burly all mountain bikes out there these days. So what is my criteria when I'm looking for a great value all mountain bike? And as always, I've got my trusty list here. So we still want to carry over a lot of our things that we had in our budget buyer's guide. So a wide range one by drivetrain, a dropper post, tapered head tube, as well as a boost frame with through axles. But because we're making descending a priority now, we want to step things up to the next level. So we want an air fork with at least 34 mil stanchions and then we want some decent damping with that fork too. So we want to take that next step up with hydraulic disc brakes. So we want either a mid-level or at least four piston brakes as well. We also want 130 to 150 millimeters of travel for these kind of bikes. Definitely starting to make descending a bit more of a priority there. And then we want geometry that's a bit more capable on the descent. So at least a 66 degree head angle, steeper seat angle and a longer reach as well. Okay, so let's talk about price. And as I said earlier, value is a very subjective term. And to me, value is really that point where you start to notice diminishing returns when you start to spend any more. And for an all mountain bike, that's going to be around 2,300 to 2,700 US dollars, around 3,000 to 3,750 Australian dollars, and then 1,750 to 2,200 British pounds as well. Again, you can go a little bit cheaper. This is just buyer's guides. This is what I think value is. Value is probably different to you. And with a lot of the bikes I'm going to be talking about, there are some models in their lineup that's a little bit cheaper. And even though with those models, you get the same great frame, they do come with more budget-oriented components. And a lot of those more budget-oriented components, they aren't really built to handle the rigors of more aggressive descending. So the forks might be a little bit flexy. The brakes just really aren't up to scratch. You want to be able to stop when you're going down a steep hill. So yeah, I think it is worth spending a little bit more. And at this point, when you're really looking at these bikes, you've kind of embraced mountain biking as a hobby. And if you've embraced it, you know that mountain biking is expensive anyway. So yeah, I think this is where the value is at. So enough of that kind of stuff. I'll be going over my top five bikes as well as five worthy mentions. And they're going to be from around the world. So there should be a bike that you'd be able to find in your country. And I'll also go over a couple of bikes in the next price tier as well, because I know a few more people or they've been leaving in the comments. They want to spend a little bit more. So I'll mention a few more in that next price tier. And lastly, info for all the bikes will be in the description as well. So if you want to look up a model, get a bit more detail on it, the link's there. But without further ado, let's get into the first bike. So the first bike on this list is one that has been super popular over the years, and that's the entry-level YT Jeff C Base, coming in at 2,299 US dollars, 1,999 Great British Pounds, but unfortunately it's a bit more expensive in Australia at $3,999, which does make some of the other options on this list a bit better for Aussies. So this one is one of the more balanced all mountain bikes on the list, making it quite versatile. There is a 29 as well as 27.5 inch version. In terms of travel, you're getting 140 millimeters of rear travel, which is built around a horse link and is very progressive. So if you like that, then this bike will be good for you. And then there's 10 millimeters of extra travel up front, so 150 there. 
The Geo is pretty dialed for this kind of bike, so on the size large, you're getting a 470mm reach, and there's also a flip chip to adjust the Geo, but we'll just look at the low setting because most people will set and forget it and leave it in there. So you get a 66 degree head angle, 77 degree seat angle, so nice and steep, and nice 435mm chainstays. So using a more traditional sizing guide, you get a nice balanced bike that's pretty versatile. But thanks to the super short seat tube, you can size up on this bike. So if you want something that's a bit more stable and your trails are pretty fast, you can size up. Looking at the spec, it's pretty good for the cash too. You get a RockShox Yari up front, which is nice and stiff and upgradable, which is what I like to see. So if you want better damping in the future, you can chuck in a charger damper to replace the motion control unit. In the rear, you get a RockShox Deluxe rear shock. So no lock out there, but this bike doesn't really need it. For the drivetrain, you get SRAM SX, which is a bit heavy, but does offer good range. Continuing the SRAM trend, you also get Guide T brakes, which are four piston brakes, which is good to see, but they do lack a little bit of power. You also get a decent drop dropper too at 150 millimeters on the size large, and size extra large and extra extra large get 170 millimeter drop, so that's good to see too. To round it all off, you get dual compound Maxxis DHRs, so I would upgrade the front to a 3C and then keep the spare tire for the rear. And then also you get race face as well as SDG finishing kit. All things considered, it's a great bike for the money and considering the alloy frame, the 14.2 kilogram weight is pretty impressive. So if you're looking for a super versatile all mountain bike at a great price, especially in the US and UK, check out the YT GFC. So the next bike I'll be pretty quick with, and that's the brand new for 2021 Polygon Siskiyou T8, coming in at an absolute steal of 2,299 US dollars and 3,399 Australian dollars. As you all know, this is my current bike and I've already made two videos on it, so I'll go over it quickly here, but check out those vids for how the bike rides. So with all Polygon bikes, there's wheel specific sizing. So in small and medium, you get 27.5 inch wheels with 140 millimeters of rear travel and 150 up front. And then medium to extra large has 29 and that has 135 millimeters of rear travel and 140 up front. I have a large 29er, so that's what I'll go over here. So it has a roomy reach of 480 millimeters, a 76.5 degree seat angle, and a 65.5 degree head angle, as well as some short 430 millimeter chainstays. The Geo is dialed for this type of bike and it's fun on more mellow trails and I can still take it out on some steeper, more technical trails without feeling too overwhelmed. The spec is dialed too with a Fox 34 rhythm up front, a Fox DPS shock, as well as an SLX 12 speed drivetrain. There is also the T7, which is a little bit cheaper, but you do miss out on that better fork, so you're getting a RockShox Recon and there's a step down in brakes as well as drivetrain. So if you are on a budget, check this one out. As I said earlier, I don't want to repeat myself too much on the channel as I've talked a lot about this bike. So check out those videos. But in my opinion, this is probably one of the best value bikes out there for this year. And as always, if you live in Australia and the US and want to get this bike, I do have an affiliate link for Bicycles Online who sell Polygon. So if this buyer's guide did help you out, it would be awesome if you could buy through that link in the description as it's a great way to support the channel. So the next bike is Carbon, yes Carbon, and it only costs a fraction more compared to the last two bikes, and that's the brand new for 2021 Vitus Escarp CR. Coming in at 2,499 US dollars, 3,799 Australian dollars, and 1,999 Great British Pounds. Even if this bike was alloy, it would still be on the list. It's safe to say Vitus has really been killing it this year with their great value bikes. The Escarp comes in both 27.5 and 29 inch wheels in full size ranges, both with 140 millimeters of rear travel and 150 up front. So it's good to see like the Jeffsy, you can pick your poison there. Looking at the Geo in the 29er size large, it's clear compared to the last two bikes, this bike leans more towards the Enduro end of the spectrum of an all mountain bike. So you've got a reach of 478 millimeters on that size large, as I said, 65 degree head angle, 77.5 degree seat angle, so nice and steep there, and more moderate 440 millimeter chainstays. Just for reference, the overall wheelbase is 30 millimeters longer than the T8, so it'll be a fair bit more stable at speed, but less maneuverable on tighter sections of trails. 
This will detract from it being a bit more of a trail bike, so if you want more versatility, I think the Jesse and the Sis UT are better picks. But looking at the spec, you get some great value here. So starting off, you get the Malzoki Z2 up front, which is a great fork and a personal favorite of mine when it comes to value. But with the intentions of this bike, I think the stiffer Z1 might be a better option. You also get a RockShox Deluxe Select rear shock, so no lock out there. In terms of the drivetrain, you get the Workhorse Shimano M6100 Dior 12 speed, which is good to see as well. Vetus always deliver on the tire spec too, with a 3C Max Terra Asagai up front and 3C Dissector on the rear, both on wide 30mm tubeless ready rims. There's also a mixed brake setup with the Shimano MT424 pots up front and the two pot MT410s in the rear, which is pretty interesting to see, but it's good they didn't cheap out on the rotors. So you've got 203 rotor up front and 180 in the rear, and it's good to see that they can be used with both metallic and resin pads. So they didn't cheap out and get resin only rotors there. To round it all off, you get a 170 millimeter dropper on the size large, as well as Vetus and new proof finishing kit. So great all round there as well. This looks like a great bike, and if you want a more stable or mountain bike, and you prefer to push the descents a little bit more, this bike is definitely worth a look. The next bike is one that was competing head to head with the Common Cell Meta TR, but just got ahead in terms of value, and that's the Nuke Proof Reactor Comp, coming in at 2,699 US dollars. 2,699 Great British Pounds and roughly 4,000 Australian dollars. So that's right at the top end of our budget. In terms of geometry, it sits right between the two first bikes and the Escarp, so still more descending oriented for more aggressive riders, but still a bit more usable on flatter trails. And if you want something more playful or stable, you can pick between 27.5 or 29 inch wheels too, which is great. The 29er has 130 millimeters of rear travel and 140 up front, while the 27.5 has 10 extra front and rear. Digging into the Geo a bit more, you do get a flip chip. So looking at the large 29er in the low setting, it has a long 480 millimeter reach, 65.5 degree head angle, but the slacker seat angle out of the bunch at 75 degrees and more moderate 440 millimeter chain stays. Onto the spec now, and it's very similar to the Escarp, no real surprises there, both being Chain Reaction house brands. So you get a Marzocchi Z2 fork up front, which is a bit more appropriate on this bike. Dior 12 speed, but there's some extra perks compared to the Vetus. So you get a super deluxe rear shock, so you've got a piggyback there, and then also Shimano four pot Dior brakes. So both these parts will help a fair bit keeping things cool and working well on longer descents. You also get the same tire spec as the Vetus, but you've got an upgraded casing, so you get the XO Plus instead of the XO. So a bit more puncture protection there. To round it all off, you got a long 170mm dropper on the size large, as well as nuke proof finishing kit. So a bit more on the expensive end, but there's nothing to change here, and the Geo is pretty dialed. So now we're into the last bike of the top five, and that's the Orbea Occam H30, coming in at 2,599 US dollars and 2,099 Great British pounds. Unfortunately, I couldn't quite find the Australian dollar pricing. The Occam is very similar to our first two bikes in the Jeff C and the Siskiyou T8, being a bit more versatile and offering a bit more of a sensible wheelbase, more efficient pedaling platform, and also a lighter weight too. It's got a pretty sleek looking frame too. It's got a nice asymmetric design. Starting with the geometry of the bike on the size large, you get a 474 millimeter reach, 66 degree head angle, steep 77 degree seat angle, and again, more moderate chain stays at 440 millimeters. The bike also rolls on 29 inch wheels and has 140 millimeters of front and rear travel. Onto the spec now, and what's cool about Orbea is that you can customize things a bit online. So for instance, the bike comes with the lackluster Shimano MT201 brakes, so you can upgrade these to the Dior brakes for a little bit extra. It's definitely handy to do this now compared to later. But to be honest, the rest of the spec is pretty damn dialed. So you've got that Marzocchi Z2 up front, Fox DPS rear shock. You've also got the Shimano M6100 Dior 12 speed, but you've got a Sunrace cassette, so they've saved a little bit of cash there. You also get Maxxis high roller tires in the front and a recon in the rear with wide tubeless ready rims. And then you also get to choose your length of dropper up to 170 millimeters as well, which is pretty awesome. So if you're looking for a more trail friendly bike and like to have a bit more fun on the descents, but not plow through the roughest trails at speed, tend to pick your lines a little bit more, check out the Occam. 
So there you go, there's my top five for 2021. But stick around, we'll go over five worthy mentions that didn't quite make the list because they might have been a bit too expensive or another bike on the list did things a little bit better. And I'll also go over a couple of bikes in the next price tier if you want to spend a little bit more. So let's get into it. So the first worthy mention that just missed out is the Common Style Meta TR Ride. This bike's for someone who pretty much wants an enduro bike. It's super long with a whopping 1257 millimeter wheelbase on the size large. So if you like it super fast, ride hard, and want a bulletproof bike, this one's for you. Next up, we have one that was right on the edge and making it into the list, and that's the Boardman MTR 9.0. I really like this bike, and the limited availability did play a role in it missing out, but you do get amazing spec for 2,000 Great British Pounds. So if you live in the UK, I would put this towards the top of your list. Then we have the Canyon Spectral AL7 or AL5, depending on where you are in the world, it's spec the same. This was one of the absolute best value bikes a few years ago, but geometry as well as value has really caught up to it a bit compared to others on this list. It's still a great buy, but if you live in Australia and want something in 27.5 inch wheels, I think the Merida 140 is a better buy for the money. The next bike is another one for someone who wants a longer, faster bike, and that's the Norco Sight A3. Similar to the common style, the wheelbase and the size large is crazy at 1259 millimeters. That's super long. So it's definitely tailored to someone who climbs mostly for their descents, not really riding a lot of undulating, more mellow trails. So if you like to really push your bike hard, I'd check out the Norco site. The last bike on my worthy mentions is the Giant Trance X3 29er 3. Bit of a mouthful there. I really like this bike. The geometry is perfect for this style of bike and the suspension platform is really good too. I just wish it came with the RockShox Revelation instead of the RockShox Gold 35 as it's not upgradable like the Revelation. But overall, the frame is absolutely dialed, and if you can look past the future upgradability of the fork, or just buy another fork secondhand, go for it. And just to finish off, if you're moving into that next tier of pricing, check out the next model up of all these bikes in their respective lineups, as well as the Specialized Stump Jumper and Stumpy Evo, which look great for this year, so freshly updated. I would also check out the Privateer 141, which is an absolute steal for the spec that you're getting for the money. And again, it's more tailored to someone who really wants to push the descents. And lastly, I check out the Carbon Fazari Delano Peak, which comes with some awesome spec and great gear for the money too. Top. So there you go. There's my best value all mountain bikes for 2021. Sorry if these bikes are a little bit too expensive, but this is where I truly feel the best value is. And if you do want to spend a little bit less, some of these bikes have some cheaper models in their lineup as well. So like the Siskiyou T7, and then also the Boardman as well. There's some cheaper models there. But as I said earlier, if you want some more budget options, definitely check out my budget buyers guide as well. So if you do like the versatility of a trail bike, but you want to start to push your descents a little bit more, check out these bikes. These buyers guides do take a little bit of time to put together. So I'd really appreciate if you guys could like the video. Also subscribe as well if you want to check out some more buyers guides and some other videos like this in the future. And leave a comment. Did I miss out on any bikes? Or let me know which one your favorite one is. And as always guys, thanks for watching. See ya. Oh